Former U.S. Navy Chief Information Officer Aaron Weiss made his return to the industry side of the government contracting ecosystem when he joined Google Public Sector in March 2023. In this interview, the four-time WASH 100 award winner spoke with us about readjusting from government to industry, how his perspective on cybersecurity is shifting, and which emerging technologies he has his eye on. If you like this interview, please like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you're interested in being interviewed, email summer at executivemosaic.com. Hello, and welcome to Executive Mosaic's video interview series. I'm Summer Myatt, and here to speak with me today is Aaron Weiss, Managing Director of Technology at Google Public Sector. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So Aaron, you just joined Google after almost four years as CIO of the Navy. What have your first few months been like? Can you talk about the challenges and rewards of refocusing your lens as you make the transition from government to industry? Yeah, it's been an amazing uh, maybe month and a half since I've arrived. You know, obviously the culture within Google is completely different than the culture in DOD. It's a culture that is, is fun and focused on solving problems and solving problems at speed. And so one of the things that I've really enjoyed is getting integrated into that speed. And at the same time, continuing to be focused on solving kind of the tough mission problems that we focused on when I was at the Department of the Navy. Uh, and in some cases, it's good to almost come back home, if you will, to operating at speed. Before I went to the government, I was a CIO in industry and sort of had an opportunity to work in multiple kind of IPOs and spinoffs where we did move at sort of warp speed. And uh, you know, in a way, it feels good to be back to that but at the same time, continuing to focus on the, the really tough stuff. A few months ago in February, as your time with the Navy was coming to a close, you said the way we approach the problem of cybersecurity is wrong. How are you taking lessons learned from your public sector service and reshaping your approach to cybersecurity now in your new role at Google? Yeah, I did say that, and I said it over and over and over again. And I do still believe that the way that the DOD uh, and much of the government approaches the problem of cybersecurity is wrong. You know, they approach it as a compliance problem, which is, you know, if we check off all the boxes and we fill out all the forms that will somehow be secure. And there's a lot of track record, years and years of track record that says that that's not the case and sort of. What is the definition of insanity? It's repeating the same thing over and over again and hoping for a different outcome. And I think one of the things that Google brings to the table and part of why I'm so excited to be here at Google is Google is sort of the original and originator of the concept of zero trust. And that zero trust is real time cybersecurity. It's not fill out a form once and say we're secure. Zero trust is asking every second of every day, do we trust the user? Do we trust the device? Do we trust the network? Do we trust the data that's about to be looked at? And do we trust the application? And looking at the intersection of all five of those variables over and over and over again as a way to have real-time ongoing cybersecurity. Yes, we'll always need checklists. Yes, we'll always need standards. But to be able to do that, on an, on an ongoing basis is key. And Google is the originator of that as they shifted about 10 years ago uh, to that way of operating. So it's exciting to sort of be with a company that lives what I kind of was on the bully pulpit about there for the last year that I worked at the Department of the Navy. I think we can really bring that back to the public sector uh, and, and really help accelerate their move to that way of cybersecurity. I want to dig into the zero trust conversation a little bit more. I know federal agencies will be required to achieve certain zero trust standards by 2024. What are some of the challenges and major hurdles you're anticipating agencies will encounter as they make this transition? And what are some solutions you suggest? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, coming from my previous role, if I put my, my hat on that I wore just a few months ago, the biggest barrier to realizing that world of zero trust is the legacy 
infrastructure that is the Department of Defense and much of the government. I said early on when I came into the role that the Department of Navy was maybe 15 to 20 years behind where industry was at in terms of their architectures, their infrastructure capability. Um, and so the theme of modernization became really, really critical. And you hear that across the public sector space and especially in the federal space and in the DOD. And so the ability to attain that level of modernization and to bring infrastructure up to a modern capability is almost a prerequisite to being able to truly realize zero trust. Not to say that zero trust can't be realized in other areas. At the Department of Navy, we implemented a very robust uh, zero trust network on the flank speed capability that we laid down of, across over a half a million desktops. Very robust, very capable, sort of order of magnitude more capable than the legacy capability. But that was limited to the area where we were operating on that newer cloud infrastructure. And so the challenge, I think, for a lot of the public sector space and the federal space is how quickly can they get to that capability so that zero trust has a, has a chance? It's not something you're going to bolt on to a legacy system or a legacy infrastructure. And so there's transformation that's needed. There's modernization that's needed. But if they're doing it, with the outcome in mind of zero trust, then that's the, that's the place they're steering towards. And again, I think Google brings a lot to the table there to help the, the federal government get there. In your opinion, what is the most challenging aspect of achieving successful digital transformation and modernization in the public sector? And how do you plan to tackle that problem now from industry? Yeah, you know, I think up until now, the government has been looking at cloud as an enabler and cloud capability. They viewed the cloud capability, though, through their legacy lens. And what I mean when I say that is, you know, the government asked for GovCloud, which is a air-gapped separate cloud capability that different cloud service providers would stand up to give the government equivalent cloud capability, but not have it touch their commercial capability. That's a way of thinking about it that is sort of rooted in that legacy view, which is a way of thinking that says computing power is in data centers on servers and racks and computers and hard drives. That is over the long term a limiter for the government. And I think the government has an opportunity now as they've come out with this zero trust mindset to say that we can secure data user application network, et cetera, on a real-time basis, it no longer implies that they need to sort of live in a castle behind a moat of GovCloud. And now they get the advantage of using all of the massive compute and capability that exists commercially for cloud providers. It's a shift for the government in terms of the way that they think about that. It will be an enabler for the government in, in order to realize that zero trust dream. And that is an area where, you know, we're working together with the government to help bring some of those uh, new philosophies to how we secure the government's data. And we do it not by sort of living behind a data center wall, but living behind logical separation and zero trust capability. It's sort of a next evolution. Lastly, Aaron, what do you think are the emerging technologies that will shape the great power competition in the next few years? And where do we stand on the adoption and implementation of those technologies? I think there's a number of emerging technologies that are coming over the horizon that have the opportunity to help the government solve their most difficult problems. And they come in many shapes and sizes. It's not just in the realm of cloud. I know everyone wants to talk about AI. AI is clearly an emerging and it has emerged capability that now we have to figure out how to leverage and use ethically while at the same time using it for its uh, maximum potential. But there are multiple others, whether we're talking about the ability for the government to use these massive global mesh networks that industry has built up in the form of these meshes that support uh, global cloud service providers 
extremely capable network capability with high resilience and a level of redundancy that the DOD or the government is never going to get by relying on specific pieces of fiber. Another one is the emergence, and it was one I was passionate about at the Department of Navy, is the emergence of the low Earth orbit satellite communications capability. That's a potential game changer in terms of having this sort of infrastructure independent ability to communicate and an infrastructure independent ability to bring capability to the point of need. And all of those things, now, if you start to layer them on top of each other, you get capability built on capability. So start to imagine global commercially capable cloud infrastructures that are securing with zero trust, riding across these global mesh networks, all interconnected with incredible amounts of resiliency, interconnected with a satellite communications capability, a high bandwidth that never goes out and now start to extrapolate to the next level, start to put compute in orbit on that low earth orbit platform where you're talking about latency measured in 10 or 15 or 20 milliseconds. And you start to realize there's some immense capability that's coming. It's about though building capability on capability. None of what I just talked about is pie in the sky. It all exists today, whether we're talking about AI or mesh networks, or low earth orbit or any of those things, but it's about how does all of it get assembled to help drive the outcomes that we're looking for. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for your time today and for all the work you do at Google Public Sector. Thank you and thanks for having me, Summer.